Shamai, Lieto and my naughty Sankayach Vaur. Hello, Lee again here at Sankayach Vaur Manor House. Now, in the last video, um, we showed you how we make the ink that we use to, to write out all the various documents that we've got lying around the house so that when we are open to the public, people who come in, they can not just look at things, but they can pick them up, they can handle them, they can read the documents so that we can maintain the, the air of historical accuracy to 1645, the middle of the Civil War. But as this was a very wealthy house, Colonel Pritchard was one of the wealthiest men in Glamorgan. He would, uh, in the fashion of the day, been expected to a certain extent to display that wealth. Uh, and to do this, not only would you have a very fine house, lots of land, excellent furniture, but the things you filled the house with, the smaller things, they too would be a display of wealth. And one of the most expensive things that you could have bought back then that was way out of the reach of most people were things like this. Books. Now the first thing we're going to need to be able to bind a book is the actual print block itself. And uh, as you can imagine, print blocks from the 17th century are few and far between. And those that survive are considerably more expensive than your average rural museum could afford. So we have these. What we need to do then is to get this bound. I'm going to fully leather bind it today. To do that, we need a very particular tool. We need one of these. This is a sewing frame. Get it the right way around. And a sewing frame were, would have been used to bind every, almost every single book that was produced up until the advent of mechanical book binding. And the idea being that these cords that hang from it, they're secured underneath. Then you can wind this top bar up. It tensions these cords and then you can sew your block. Now to start off, in addition to the sewing frame, we're going to need a ball of cord and we're going to need some of these interesting looking things. Now these are cord keys and these are used as part of the process of putting tension on the cords so you can sew the print block in. Okay, so with that tied in place to stop it from moving, place that upside down, you can see that the cord is coming through this slot at the bottom and all we need to do is, there's our key, hold that to the front, the cord comes around the head of the key and then down through the legs at the bottom. You can tighten that up and then that will hold each and every cord tight. And there we go. All three keys now in position. Now we need to place this upright again. Get rid of that cord. And now we need to position our cords to exactly where we want to sew them into the binding. Now there's lots of talk of sewing. Um, so what exactly do I mean? Well, I quite literally mean I'm going to sew the book into these cords but before we can set these cords as accurate as we need them there's another process that needs to be looked to and that is preparing the print block um, first of all we need to mark it up so what we do is we'll place one line there and another right next to it and then at the top, we'll place a line and then another right next to it. And then equidistant between the two, which is about there, we'll place another line and one next to it. So now we're ready 
to line up. So what we do is we bring in our sewing frame. We place the block on it and we line up our signature, our cords between the sets of lines that we've just made. That being done, we can then tension it. We do that by simply winding up these large wooden nuts. And there we have some nice tension. We're ready to start sewing. Or at least we're very nearly ready to start sewing. First of all, we need to pierce each signature. And the reason we do that is simply to make it easier to pass the needle and thread through when we're actually sewing it on the frame. So all we do for that, we open it up and those lines that we drew across the spine, they leave little dots on every individual signature. So all we need to do is take a braddle and then we pierce each and every hole along the spine of the signature and that will allow us to sew it far more easily. And with that done, we really are ready to start sewing. Now in order to make our thread bind very strongly, to actually bite into the, uh, into the work so that it remains strong, we need to wax the string. Uh, a lot of people use um, beeswax, I often use beeswax, but we have a beeswax candle. So all we need to do, draw that through a couple of times, and that now means that when this is drawn through the work, when you draw it tight, the wax will bind into itself as it rubs against the piece next to it, and it will bite into place. And we're also using these darning needles. So there we have it. A nicely threaded needle. We're ready to start binding. So we take our first signature and we place it face down on our sewing frame. Now you can, you can see the holes line up nicely. So the first Insertion goes to that single outer hole that we made. Draw that right the way through. And then we come out through the first of the double holes and then back in around the cord. And then we pull this sideways. If you pull it directly through, there's a very good chance that it will tear through the edges. So that one done, we come out and back in. And back out and then into the last of the double holes that we made. That pulls good and tight so that the cord pulls the signature nice and tight into those cords. And then finally we come back out through that end single hole. So now that we've done that one, we take our next signature, place that on top, and we go straight in through that first single hole that we made. Now at this point, we tie a knot. Here are the, here's the tail for where we first went into the block. And all we need to do is tie a small knot and then that holds the first 
two edges together very tightly. And as the, the string is waxed, as you draw it in, it binds to itself and that leaves an exceptionally strong knot. Now, third signature, on that goes. And we get, again go in through the first hole, out through the second, and around the cords. Now, we'll get the rest of this sewn up, and then we'll get on to the next part of the process. Last signature is sewn in, and because it's the last one, we do a, a double kettle stitch on this one. So you go in beneath the third and the fourth signatures through the loop, draw that in tight. And because, as we said before, the wax has the wax binds into itself, making an exceptionally strong little knot. So there we are, we're done. And what we need to know. is remember these little brass keys at the bottom pull them out and there is our fully sewn signature now these might look a bit unsightly but they have uh, a very important purpose extremely important which we'll come to in a little bit but for now we need to get on to the next part of the process so now we have our signature all set up, it's on to the next step. Now, this at the present is no more than a pamphlet. We have to get some boards on it to protect the pages underneath. And for that, we just use some heavy duty card. Now this is perfectly historically accurate. We're using cards to bind books centuries before the Civil War. And it's a simple process. All you do is you find a piece of, in this case, fortunately, the card is exactly the right size that we need. Uh, but remember, we're gonna need two, one for the back, one for the front. And so we line it up with a little bit of overhang along all the edges, and then simply mark that up. And with that board cut now into two pieces of equal size, these have to be attached back and front of our bound and sewn block. So what we do is we simply place the cut board over the front of the book and we mark exactly where those sewn in cords are on the outer edge. We'll take a punch. This is just a, an ordinary leather punch, quite old, quite a vintage one, but one hole, two holes, three holes. And we do the same with the back piece. Now this next part of the task is liable to get a bit messy, so put down a piece of lining paper. And what we need to do, making sure that we've got the front piece, we take our cords and pass them through the front of the board. So they pass through the front of the book and these now need to be glued but before we do that being as we are on a timetable we'll also do the back at the same time usually I would do one board then I would allow it to dry then go on to the next but for this one we'll just try and get it all done in one go okay the boards are in place now we need some grease proof paper because we don't want the glue to get onto the pages of the book and if you don't put a piece of grease proof paper in 
then they certainly will. Now we can also shorten our cords now that they're in place. And these cords will sit in the glue. Now, I'm using ordinary PVA wood glue. And we'll just take a little of that glue and we'll drop it in behind the cords. Now, what we need to do is we need to unwind these threads and lay them into the glue. Because what we're going to do is we're going to comb these out flat. And the reason for that is that when we come to the process of actually laying the leather onto the glue, we want it to lie nice and flat around the edges. And also we don't want the cords to, to indent into the paper of the book. Just don't forget this book is probably going to spend the majority of, it, majority of its life closed and on a shelf. But when it does get opened then you want to see a nicely bound pretty looking book. And there we have it. Boards are attached back and front. This now needs to go into a press. And this is our press. This is actually a finishing press, uh, as opposed to a laying press. Finishing presses have these, these chamfer top, but it also acts as a laying press. Um, it also has a third function, as uh, for, for ploughing books, but that's not something we're going to be doing today. So that will either remain a mystery to you or you can go and look it up elsewhere. Right, I've dropped a couple of pieces of uh, greaseproof paper either side to uh, stop the glue going all over the, all over the press. And I'm going to lay some glue across the spine. And then we're going to attach the mould to that. But the glue doesn't only go along the spine. We'll come to that in a second. So we take our mull and we lay it directly onto the spine. And as you push it on, you can feel the glue seeping up between the holes in the cloth. And that is exactly what we want. Now to glue the edges. So now the whole spine of our book has been glued and the mull is set in place. We have to let that dry. And what happens is as, as the glue begins to dry and it contracts, because it's completely saturated into this mull, it draws the spine good and tight together. And that is exactly what we're looking for. Now this is gonna take anywhere between 12 to 16 hours to fully cure. And uh, I don't think any of us wanna sit here looking at it for that long. So I'm gonna draw an end to this part of the video, but please do come and join us for part two, when we'll be finishing off this book in full calf leather. Until then, au revoir.